In Washington, Indiana, as trains passed, the passengers would always be hoping to see an automobile. As they got their first ever look of the horseless carriage, out of excitement they would shout, What kind of car is that? The youngster behind the wheel would reply, A Graham. They would shout back, Never heard of it, and he would say, Oh, you will. The year was 1901, and this first model of a Graham truck is very different from what people today would expect to see on a truck. The driver sat on the right side of the seat. He steered using a rudder attached to the front axle and curving up over the dashboard. Since the car had no reverse, if there was no room to turn around, the driver simply dismounted, picked up the front end of the car, and headed it another direction. Now for the 13-year-old, Joseph Graham, this was only the start of his booming career in the automobile business. The Graham brothers, Joseph, Ray, and Robert, were born in the 1880s in Davies County, Indiana. They lived in Washington and sat on the largest farm ground of the area of 4,000 acres. Their father, Zeba Graham, opened the first electric utility in Washington. The brothers were well off because of their father's success, but that did not take away from their incredible work ethic and ambition. Even though they were never poor, the brothers always had big dreams and big ideas. All three men, even though they grew up as farmers, were all college-educated businessmen. In addition to being brothers, they were close friends and had every intention of remaining social and business associates. The Graham brothers owned a very successful glassworks company in Lagodi, Indiana. They opened up another factory in Evansville, located at the corner of Kentucky and Canal. When it became time to sell, the brothers weren't sure of the next steps but they knew that they wanted to stay in the developing Evansville area. The brothers saw the need for a work truck and saw the amount of highly skilled workers in Evansville and knew they needed to set up here. Automobiles were still new on the scene when the Graham brothers came to the industry. For the last few decades, men have been tinkering and toying with the concept of a car. This idea of a car is far from what anyone nowadays would think, and these motor-powered carriages seemed only feasible for the wealthy. In 1908, Henry Ford became the first person to mass produce affordable automobiles for the average working class person. This sparked a revolution in the industry, as people no longer saw automobiles as a toy for the rich. Now everyone could own one. Many people had already had their own version and were building personal cars, but due to the success of Ford, other manufacturers wanted to step into the game and mass produce their own automobile. This led to some manufacturers, such as Dodge, General Motors, and Chrysler, to join in and take part of this new concept. The Model T paved way not just for these big names, but for many local and rural dreamers. During this time period, there were 253 automobile manufacturers in the world. Among the need for automobiles, there was also a great need for a dependable work truck. Many professions were in need of trucks, and the industry was ready to fill the need. From here we see Ford and Chevy produce their first rendition of a pickup truck. These trucks are nothing like the Ford or Chevy you would see today. These trucks were small, weighing approximately one ton or less. They were not big enough or strong enough to meet all of the work demands that the consumer needed. There's all kind of uh, different bodies on Graham trucks, and, but uh, they build some pretty good sized trucks compared with uh, uh, the Model T. Farmers needed a truck that could pull a plow through the fields. Businesses needed a delivery truck that could be loaded down with supplies. There was a need for tow trucks and dump trucks as well. The industry had a huge ceiling and many small businesses tried to enter, but never made it big in the truck business. Now the industry was desperate for a strong, dependable work truck. In 1917, after selling their successful glassworks business, the Graham brothers jumped into the growing truck business. They came out with a 1.5 ton, four-cylinder engine model that was an immediate success. In 1919, they came out with a model called the Truck Builder. This was a truck frame that had no specifications to it, and then the customer could customize it to however they liked. These trucks were specifically designed for work. The truck included a frame, cab, body, and Torbenson internal gear drive. This allowed for the customer to build their own truck, in a sense. This design made way for so many people in need of a dependable work truck. Farmers now had a truck for the fields. Companies had trucks that could do delivery, bottling, and towing. The design could be used for dump trucks and cargo as well. 
This one-of-a-kind truck design was a huge success, and shortly after, the brothers were able to expand the truck variety with a one-ton and two-ton option. They got their engines from the local Dodge dealer, Hartmetz Brothers. And in 1921, after their success, they realized they better strike a deal directly with Dodge. After the transaction, Grand Brothers trucks were built using Dodge four-cylinder engines and transmissions along with other Dodge components. Dodge also took control over the marketing aspect, indirectly making Grand Brothers a Dodge product. These trucks were so popular and dependable that they started being used for ambulances and fire trucks. This transaction put Graham in the driver's seat and they jumped to second in the truck producing industry. In July of 1919, Graham Brothers made one of the most notable and important transactions ever in the area with the purchase of a $500,000 tract of land for the new Graham Brothers plant. The 500,000 square foot plant was located between the Belt Railroad and Maxwell Avenue just east of Stringtown Road and was the largest one-story building in Evansville. Soon after, Graham Brothers started creating their trucks in the Stringtown plant, the Graham truck hit the top in demand and was meeting all the customer criteria. In 1925, Graham Brothers started a huge $300,000 building project to improve the plant by building a two-story brick metallurgical laboratory and a new power plant to supply power and light to the entire plant. Graham Brothers produced approximately 60,000 vehicles per year, moving Dodge to seventh in overall sales. In 1927, Dodge bought out Graham completely and with the purchase added three new models to the line, including the one-quarter, one-half, and two-and-a-half ton models. At this time, the Chrysler Corporation purchased Dodge Brothers and with that also gained control over Graham Brothers. Now because of the buyout, the Graham Brothers bought out the failing Page Detroit Motor Company and the Graham stint with Dodge came to an end. After this transaction, the Graham stamp was removed from all the trucks and Dodge had full ownership over the product. Due to the stock market crash in 1929, the new Graham Page Motor Company fell on hard times. Then when the company's head of finance and co-founder, Ray Graham, fell ill and passed away, the Evansville plant was forced to close its doors in 1932. The brothers continued in Michigan and came out with a few new cars under the Graham Page name, releasing the Blue Streak and the Supercharger. The brothers tried to continue the production of Graham cars over the next few years, but never fully recovered from the losses of the Great Depression. Then they came out with a seemingly revolutionary body design called the Shark Nose. This design was very highly praised in the media and in the consumer's eyes, but when it hit the market and flopped, the Graham brothers were in bad shape for the next few years. In 1940, Joseph and Robert Graham threw their last shot in the truck business. Once again, their plans were halted when the start of World War II placed production restrictions. The two brothers announced they'd open back up after the war, but lacking money and resources, the rest of their production assets were bought out by Kaiser and Fraser in 1947, and the Graham Brothers automobile venture came to an end.